The origins of the English Parliament are often traced back to the Parliament summoned by Simon de Montfort in 1265, following a civil war with Henry III. This brought together knights from the shires and burgesses, representatives of towns, to discuss matters of state. But de Montfort was not the first ruler to understand the need to seek the views, consent, and support of those he governed. The Anglo-Saxons got there first. Governing a kingdom without a large bureaucracy, police force, or standing army was a challenge, especially when you had Viking raids to contend with. To govern effectively, the Anglo-Saxon kings needed a system of government in which all of the influential and powerful had a stake, something that encouraged them to work with the king to maintain order. The first tool at the king's disposal was the Witten. This was an assembly made up of aldermen, thanes, archbishops, and bishops. Aldermen, or earls, were important nobles who governed large areas of land known as shires, very similar to our modern counties, many of which still have Anglo-Saxon names. The aldermen were in turn in charge of overseeing local assemblies called moots, and the shire court, which dispensed justice. They were also expected to lead armies when commanded to do so. Thanes were lesser nobles, whose power came from the lands and wealth they held from the king. In return for these gifts, they were expected to provide military service during times of war. Representing the church, a key political player and a powerful landowner, were the archbishops, and below them, the bishops, who oversaw a diocese containing many individual church parishes. The Witten was not a formal institution that met regularly, at a single location, or with set rules as to who would attend. It existed only when the king chose, and was made up of the individuals he summoned. Most Wittens met in the south of England, many at London or Winchester, but there are also records of meetings being held in Lincoln and Nottingham. The Witten advised the king and listened as he declared new laws. They also witnessed and participated in royal ceremonies. Ceremony was an important part of maintaining the image and authority of kingship. Anglo-Saxon kings also relied on reeves to collect taxes and fines in the shires, and enforce and witness the king's law being carried out in the local courts. If Shire Reeves sounds familiar, that's because this role evolved to become the more familiar Sheriff in medieval England. Out in the shires, moots met regularly to discuss local matters, attended by local nobles, bishops, the Shire Reeve, and four representatives of each village. The government of Anglo-Saxon England relied on these two distinct but overlapping sources of authority. One centred around the king and his Witten, the other around the Shire Moot. This system also depended on communication back and forth between the king and his leading nobles and churchmen, and between the king and local elites in the shires. At the same time the king was issuing laws, others were trying to influence the king. Lawmaking was a process of discussion. In the law code known as Six Athelstan, we can see how negotiation and compromise shaped the law. Drawn up on advice of a peace guild of bishops and reeves, the code was both a general statement about how law and order was to be maintained in London, and a measure of reform. It contains advice on how to deal with cattle rustlers, placed conditions on certain royal fines, and increased the value of stolen goods that carried the death penalty from eight pence to over a shilling. This demonstrates that while the king was in charge, to govern effectively, he needed the cooperation and consent of others.